Welcome to module 37 of object oriented analysis and design. From the last module, we have been discussing about state machine diagrams. These are behavioral diagrams used to capture the discrete behavior of a complex system at an appropriate level. And uh, we have uh, in this uh, outline, we have already covered the vertex and behavioral state of a uh, state machine diagram and wherein we have seen that uh, a state machine diagram could be of behavioral state nature or it could be of a protocol state machine nature. Protocol state machine we have not discussed as yet. In terms of the behavioral state machine, we have seen that there could be different behavioral states, simple composite which comprise lot of substates in one region or in multiple regions orthogonally where which happen concurrently or it could have sub machine states. In this context, uh, we will next introduce uh, the concept of pseudo states and talk about the behavioral transitions in this module. So, uh, this is uh, the uh, state machine uh, diagram of an ATM that we closed uh, the earlier module with and I expect that uh, you have already tried to understand and work through this. So, in this what you can see that this is the uh, start and uh, this is a final end termination of the state uh, machine diagram. So, this is when it is in a state off and you can turn it uh, uh, you can turn it on to get into a, that gets into a self state mode and then uh, if it is if it is tested ok then it gets into the idle state where it will remain there till somebody inserts the card where it gets into this serving customer state which is as you can see it is a composite uh, state but it is a non orthogonal composite state or simple composite state because it has only one region and the operations herein are sequential in nature and herein you have other composite states. These symbols show you that there are other composite states which will have further detailing of the customer authentication and the transaction kind of uh, state behavior that is being talked of. This composite state has the entry and exit as read card and eject card that is and on entry the action is uh, read card on exit the action is reject card and the overall action of this uh, activity of this uh, composite state is what is shown through this. And uh, there are uh, several exits if you cancel this is it comes back to idle if it fails it goes to out of service. There would be different transitions between maintenance out of service self state and so on. So, this uh, more comprehensively tries to define the state transitions uh, of a of an ATM system at a behavioral level. So, <coughs> moving on we are talking about pseudo states or abstract vertices. The idea is uh, very simple, we are talking about uh, state transition or state machine diagram. So, these are these are typically how the states are drawn and you have transitions uh, between them the transitions may have some uh, event, some action for the transition to happen. So, these we have seen as they are called the different types of behavioral state and so on. But uh, if you look at this whole diagram as a graph, then you will find that uh, just by uh, using these uh, uh, state uh, symbols, you will not be able to define the whole diagram. So, for example, if you just go back and take a look into uh, this state machine diagram, these are these are all different uh, behavioral state you can you can see that. But uh, with their transition alone, we cannot define the whole uh, system because we need for example, uh, this node as well because whatever be your uh, whatever be your beginning, there will have to be something where there is no state where you the whole system is starting. There will have to be something where beyond which there is no further state and so on. So, these kind of states which need to be there as vertices in the state machine diagram 
but do not represent the behavioral state are typically called the pseudo states. And we will see that pseudo states also carry a lot of information and there are as you can see the list there are a whole lot of pseudo states which not only define uh, certain resting place for the transitions, but they also define certain different ways that the transitions can actually get composed. So, initial uh, pseudo state is what you have we have seen this is uh, where you get uh, started and uh, this simply is shown as a blob and the terminal pseudo state is beyond which we cannot proceed further. So, implies the termination of the execution of the states and this is not same as the uh, final state of the state machine that is a different thing this is just termination of the execution. So, which means that in terms of the transition there is no further transition possible in that, but the state machine may still continue to execute somewhere else. So, these are the first uh, simplest kind of uh, pseudo states. Then you have uh, entry point and uh, exit point uh, pseudo states. So, the entry point and exit point uh, pseudo states are this is a state and you say that this is a user entry we talked about entry and exit of states. So, this is the user entry uh, that is happening here. So, with this symbol you show that and at this point for the state to actually make transition it needs to take some input some uh, entry from the user. Similarly, there are these are this is another state and this symbol show that a user exit that is uh, the, the cross shows that is an exit point of the state machine or the composite state that this is the point through which it will go out. So, these are basically entry point and exit point uh, pseudo states are basically more meaningful if you have a submission uh, state uh, or a uh, composite state where you show by this entry point as to where you are entering the composite state and or the submission state or where you leave go out of the submission state or the composite state. Mind you this is these are not same as the initial and final state of the state machine which are basically true for the whole machine here you are talking about entry and exit from a composite state which is a part of the state machine. There are choice uh, pseudo states which are basically like uh, decision uh, paths. So, in terms of a transition it could happen that uh, based on certain condition which are the guard condition and this will look very similar to the kind of uh, decision nodes and uh, kind of merge nodes and all that we did for the activity diagram, but here they mean some I mean they are semantically uh, similar, but they mean different things here you are saying that uh, these are pseudo states. So, that if a transition is supposed to happen on this uh, path depending on this condition it will either happen on this path or it will happen on this path. So, that is the choice that you are making and the choice need not be binary this could be multi way choice as well and such um, uh, uh, vertices that happen in the uh, state machine uh, graph are known as choice pseudo states. Then as we know that there could be concurrent uh, access there could be concurrent execution. So, so like the fork node and the join node we had in the activity diagram we have fork and join pseudo states in the state machine diagram. So, this fork and uh, so this what they say that uh, if this is a fork pseudo state. So, if uh, it splits a transition incoming transition into two or more transitions terminating on the target vastices in different regions. So, what did we specify we said that if we have a composite state with more than one region say as we see here this is a this uh, whole thing is a composite state this is one region this is another region shown by separated by this uh, dotted separator and this is a whole composite uh, state these are the sub states s and q are the sub states of the composite state and they are into two different regions. So, if we want to show that uh, be an a transition happens into both of these uh, regions together. So, it is like uh, the transition is happening on this and it happens on the substate of region 1 and substate of region 2 together concurrently then we say we have a 
forking transition or we have a fork pseudo state. Similarly, if we have multiple regions, we need to merge the different uh, regions, the transitions into a common transition. So, this is this was region 1, this is region 2 and they are merged together. This is again pretty much like the merge node of activity diagram. So, they are merged together in the transition into a single transition. So, beyond this point it becomes a single transition. So, these are also uh, nodes uh, uh, states in the state machine diagram, but these are pseudo states uh, required for expressing the concurrency in terms of the transition. We have a couple of uh, other um, uh, pseudo states as well. One is called the junction pseudo state. A junction pseudo state is where you uh, create a pseudo state to uh, do a confluence of multiple different transitions at, at one point and uh, so they merge and then they diverge together and so on. And you have shallow history pseudo state and deep history pseudo state is basically if some uh, composite uh, um, state is put on hold uh, in terms of its execution and then the execution is resumed at a later point of time. It depends on how what whether it will resume from the most recent activity or it will uh, re, uh, repre, it will uh, resume from the most uh, uh, recent uh, configuration. Depending on that, you have two different kinds of history pseudo states and those are also uh, part of uh, the state machine diagram. So, here you have a join junction uh, pseudo state where this is receiving a voice message, this is receiving uh, an SMS message, this is receiving a fax message. So, on this on junction the transition is on a junction pseudo state after which you will basically get into different transitions of depending on whether you are replying in voice, you are replying on SMS or you are replying using fax. So, whenever you have such confluence you say you have a junction pseudo state appearing here. So, this is another example. So, this is uh, here we are uh, showing the process of uh, uh, enrollment into the into a semester. So, this is the this is the start initial node and this is the um, uh, substate uh, uh, enrollment here and the term started. So, then you make transition to being taught and uh, if it the enrollment is cancelled then you reach here and here this if this classes end then you go for the final exam otherwise the student might uh, drop out and uh, then it you can if the if for that the seminar has a size uh, 0 that is a class size becomes 0 then you uh, reach a termination otherwise if it is uh, greater than 0 if it, there are more students even after this student has dropped if there are more students then you come back and continue uh, teaching so at this node you can you can easily see that uh, a junction is taking place a junction is taking place here as well which also merges with the final state final pseudo state of the state machine so junction is a is a nice representation for the different pseudo states uh, here is uh, we are showing some uh, shallow history pseudo state i will not go through the, there are a couple of examples that i have put in i will not go through uh, detailing on the discussion of them, uh, I would expect you to uh, really read through and uh, understand them more. So, here we are just uh, showing that uh, there is a history. So, there is a washing machine, uh, the state uh, transition, state machine diagram for a washing machine. So, it is in a washing state, then it is a rinsing state where it puts in more and more water and cleans your cloth, and then finally, it is in a spinning state trying to uh, take away the water from the clothes and uh, so this is the initial state this is a final pseudo state and now now suppose if if there's a power cut if there's a the power is put off then it goes to a power of state and uh, then when you restore power it uh, you what you are showing that when you restore power you restore power to get back to a shallow history pseudo state which means that just think about the practical situation if the power could have uh, got uh, disconnected when you are in a washing state. If that happens then when the power comes back you want 
the uh, machine to restart in the washing state itself. You do not uh, want the machine to be spinning because the rinsing has not happened. Whereas, when the power uh, went off, if you are in the rinsing state, you would like the machine to restart in the rinsing state. Otherwise, if you are in the spinning, then you would like to restart in the spinning state. So, this is the significance of history. So, that is what you mean by history. So, you will remember, try to remember the shallow history. The shallow history is about the last active uh, substate that you are in. And so, when you had to be suspended, because the power was cut off and when you resume after the power has been restored, you restart in the last uh, activity that you had been in, that is the shallow history that you have. In contrast, you can, could have a deep history pseudo state, which will not only depend on the last uh, um, uh, uh, substate, but it might depend on the last sequence of substates that you have transited through. So, I have put in some examples, uh, I will uh, please go through them. This is uh, another example of sh uh, shallow history pseudo state. This is an example of uh, deep history pseudo state. So, from the presentation, please go through them and try to understand them more. Now, finally, uh, the there is a pseudo state called the final state, which you have already seen in a number of places. And once you reach this state, then you know that your uh, state machine diagram has actually come to a completion and there is no further state transitions to happen for this state machine diagram. So, uh, these are uh, some examples uh, showing you different uh, pseudo states. So, this is this is the initial uh, pseudo state, this is the final pseudo state, which we have been uh, seeing quite uh, regularly. Then if we see here, uh, this is again the initial, the initial, the final, this is this you can say is a exit pseudo state. So, this is uh, the exit pseudo state which uh, takes you out of the submachine diagram. Uh, this is uh, using this, uh, this is another toaster uh, oven uh, example. So, you can you can see that. Uh, so, what are the if we identify first the simple uh, behavioral states, then this is a simple behavioral state, this is a simple behavioral state, this is a simple behavioral state these states uh, do not have any other, uh, do not need other states to work. So, each one of them some have some entry and exit, like toasting is uh, entry is arm time event that uh, you set that this is the kind of toast color that I want and exit it disarm time event that is the toast has happened for the specified period of time. So, the timing timer is disengaged and the toasting actually stops. Then you have the entry for door open, which is uh, internal lamp being on and the exit is internal lamp being off. That is, if you open the toaster, then the internal lamp will get on, so that you can look inside and when you put the door close, then this will become off. So, these are the entry exit for this. For the baking part, uh, you will have a set temperature on entry and you will have a set temperature to default possibly to non baking temperature on exit. So, these are your simple states and uh, then you can see that uh, these uh, simple states are combined into a composite state of heating, which has the entry heating on and uh, heating off. And for this composite state, this is the start uh, of the of the whole state uh, transition process, which starts with testing, uh, starts uh, I am sorry, this is the start which brings it uh, here. So, in this uh, if you have uh, the instruction to perform toasting, then this is where you do toasting and start on this. If you are instructed to do baking, then you start on this simple state machine and, but when you get a door open event, you go to go outside of this composite state and do the door open and once the door is closed, you come back to the composite state. So, this shows in using the composite states and the pseudo states, how you describe different uh, state machines symbols here. 
this is a little bit uh, more uh, you know detailed example, but it is a very simple example. Uh, I find this to be an interesting one. This is basically trying to describe the calculator that we use. So, this is like the, this is a calculator. So, uh, if you look what is a calculator is where we can uh, put in. So, I want to do 35 plus 63 equal to 98. So, what we do? I first enter these digits which is basically operand 1, then I enter the operator, then I enter these digits which is operand 2, then I enter equal to and then I get result. Then I can again enter another operator, enter an uh, operand get the result and so on. So, this behavior we are trying to describe in terms of a uh, finite machine diagram. So, uh, if, you, if you look into that uh, then certainly you need the uh, sub machines or composite states which allow you to enter operands. So, you will find an operand 1 uh, composite state here. So, which can either start and that has uh, different simple states 0, int and fraction. So, 0 is when you just enter a 0 and uh, int is when you enter with starting with something like uh, 1 to 9 and then you enter any of 0 or 1 through 9. And fraction is a decimal number. So, if you enter a point you get in here. So, if you get a 0 you are in this uh, simple state, if you get 1 through 9 you are in this simple state, if you get a point you are in this simple state. In between if you get a, you are in this simple state you get a digit 1 through 9 you come to this and you continue to remain in that and if you get a point you get to this state and so on. So, this uh, if you if you look into this operand 1 composite state that basically models how you enter the different digits of an operand. So, you will have an operand 2 also which models how you enter the different digits uh, of the second operand. So, if we so having said that if we uh, rewrite uh, this again. So, the overall action needs that I will enter the operand 1 which is basically doing this and then I will enter the operator. So, this composite uh, state has a transition on the operator which is uh, basically another simple state which is operator entered and then from that. So, this is entered and from that you have again transitions which take you to the second composite state of taking in the next second operand. And once uh, you press uh, equal to uh, key which is basically saying that you evaluate then on equal to it goes and it uh, checks here if there is uh, an error it gives you an error. For example, if you have given uh, say suppose you have given this then there will be an error. So, it will go to an error and go to the simple error state otherwise it will go to the result state where it shows the result to you again. And so, it shows you 98 here as a result and on this again you could you could uh, actually um, start all over and enter a new expression or you could give an operator you could say plus 2 if you give an operator it comes to the operator simple state and then it enters then you can enter the second operand again the first operand by default being the result itself. And in this way you can there are there are further details and there are details in terms of uh, what happens if you do C E clear entry naturally it will go back to the <coughs> ready state of the calculator. If you do clear the whole thing it will reset the whole operations uh, back here. And you can see that uh, uh, the operations of a calculator can be uh, very nicely described in terms of a uh, state machine diagram in this manner using simple states and uh, composite states and transitions and different pseudo states. You have uh, these pseudo states here, you have uh, these pseudo states uh, here, which are basically the choice states which uh, tell you which way to go and uh, so on. 
So, this is uh, just uh, I am ju just trying to give you different flavors of examples to understand that uh, state machine diagrams are really powerful to capture the dynamic behavior, the discrete behavior of a system in a very significant manner. Besides the pseudo states, you have behavioral transition. A transition is a directed relationship between a source vertex and a target vertex, which you can you have already seen. So, these are the different transitions. So, formally these are called behavioral transitions, where this is the source vertex and this is the target vertex. For this transition, this is the source vertex and this is the target vertex and the transitions may have certain conditions, card conditions uh, based on which the transition takes place and accordingly we can say that if uh, I am in I'm in state maintenance and a, a failure has happened, if this event has happened then I take this behavioral transition into the other behavioral state out of service. So, by this we can complete the state machine diagram as a whole. Mm, just as an example, I just uh, uh, put up a very different uh, state machine, which is which otherwise should be very known to uh, all of you having computer science background. This is a typical process state machine of an operating system. So, the same representation will also work for the UML. So, to summarize we have been talking continuing to discuss about the state machine diagrams and in this module beyond the behavioral states we have talked about several kinds of pseudo states and uh, explained different examples and also talked about the behavioral transition and we will continue in the next module to talk about the protocol state machines.